Jesus Christ is the creator of this universe, and evolution is specifically referenced in Genesis chapter 1. However, evolution is not referenced in Genesis chapter 2. This fact actually sheds light on much of the confusion. Genesis chapter 1 is a comprehensive account of the creation of this vast universe. On the other hand, Genesis chapter 2 is an account of God creating a very specialized scenario in an oasis in or near Mesopotamia. The Garden of Eden was an oasis in or near Mesopotamia. The miracles that God performed in Genesis chapter 2 were radically different than the miracles that God performed in Genesis chapter 1. In Genesis chapter 2, God suddenly formed Adam and Eve and the animals of the Garden of Eden. On the other hand, in Genesis chapter 1, we can see that God caused the environment to drive evolution. Read Genesis chapter 1. God controlled the environment and God created every animal that has ever lived. If you thoroughly study the Holy Bible, then you will see absolute proof that Genesis chapter 1 miracles are different than Genesis chapter 2 miracles. The only question is, are you willing to thoroughly study the Holy Bible? Incidentally, the largest animal in the Holy Bible is a well with feet in Ezekiel 32.2 of the King James Version. The Greenland right well still has a hip bone, a thigh bone, and a shin bone. And we still have a Cossacks, a vestigial tailbone. Adam did not have a Cossacks. When we do realize that the Holy Bible clearly indicates that Genesis chapter 1, one miracles are different than Genesis chapter 2 miracles, one question that eventually arises is, was Adam the first man? Many Christians will readily believe that 1 Corinthians 15.45 indicates that Adam was the first man to live on planet Earth. However, if you simply read 1 Corinthians 15.47, then you will see that Jesus Christ was the second man. You know that Jesus Christ was not the second man to live on planet Earth. All scripture must be understood in proper context. 1 Corinthians 15.45 reveals that Adam was the first man, that is true in context, and 1 Corinthians 15.47 reveals that Jesus Christ was the second man. That is also true in context. One point here is that Adam was not the first man to live on planet Earth. God created some men before God created Adam. Those people are called pre-Adamites. God created countless people in Genesis chapter 1, and God created Adam and Eve in Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 1 is not like Genesis chapter 2. If you thoroughly study the two chapters, then you will understand that they are radically different from each other. And there is a reason for this fact. In Genesis chapter 2, God provided an extremely important lesson for the entire human race. We should all learn from that lesson. If you simply study the doctrines of false teachers, then you will see that they contain inconsistencies. For instance, certain false teachers claim that God created Adam and Eve on the sixth calendar day. Those false teachers will tell you that God formed Adam on the sixth calendar day and then spent several months or even, or even years naming millions and millions of animals in Genesis 2.19. In that scenario, it was no longer the sixth calendar day when Adam finished naming the animals. Then God created Eve in Genesis 2.22 after Adam named the animals of Eden back in Genesis 2.19. It could not have been the sixth calendar day when God created Eve. As you can see, the false teachers unwittingly indicate that God did not create Eve on the sixth day. Their false doctrines do not hold water. As for evolution in the Holy Bible, God's creative evolution, if you will just take the time to study the Hebrew language in the Bible and the English language in the King James Version, then you will see evolution exactly as modern scientists 
describe evolution. You can even see in the Bible that it is true that circa 250 million years ago, the Lord God caused the flood basalt event that formed the Siberian traps and that God thereby used the environment to bring forth dinosaurs via God's creative evolution. As a matter of fact, the Holy Bible reveals that God caused the environment to play a role in the creation of behema. That is a Hebrew name for certain animals. The Hebrew word behema, Strong's 929, refers in part to dinosaurs. Some dinosaurs were behemoths. And you can see blatant biblical references to God causing the Miocene environment to drive evolution in terrestrial animals during the Miocene epoch. God created Miocene animals via God's creative evolution. It is in the Bible. How have the false teachers convinced millions of people that evolution is contrary to the Bible? The truth is that God creates creatures inside the wombs of female eukaryotes. In the next video, you will see how false teachers commit heresy against Jeremiah 1 verse 5 and Amos 5 8 and many other Bible verses. Some false teachers essentially claim that since circa 4000 BC, animals and people have simply been creating themselves through procreation while God rests. God is not resting. The Bible proves that God is not resting. As you will see, biblical creation can be complex in some instances. However, some of it is quite simple. For instance, God created seedless plants before God created plants with seeds. Go read Genesis 1 verse 12. There are so many revelations in the Holy Bible about biblical creation, and biblical creation is exactly what the scientific community has been reporting on. Biblical creation cannot possibly be thoroughly covered in a few videos. If you are interested in biblical creation, then you can go to Amazon.com and see the book that is titled, Jesus Christ Created the Heavens and the Earth. It is only 99 cents. My name is Hank Bevers. May Jesus Christ be glorified.